All right, what's up, YouTube? It's Joey, Daily Vinyl, 365 album reviews in 2016, coming at you with video 71. Well, I guess album 71, if you will. Um, and what do I want to do today? Um, something I've been listening to a lot lately because I want to get a tattoo, and there's a song that has inspired it, and that is the indie rock band As Tall As Lions, You Can't Take It With You. Um, and this is a really cool release I was able to pick up just last year. Um, Triple Crown redid these pressings. They were really hard to get before. Um, and I was happy to buy both of their records because, well, at least the two that they pressed, because As Tall as Lions is a very good band. Uh, it's a shame they're not a band anymore, but they're all, as far as they, all the guys from the band, have gone on to continue music careers in different directions. Um, the main guy, main lead singer, songwriter, he's now writing songs professionally, working with like Kylie Minogue and Sky Ferrara and Billy Idol. But he also um, makes like beat, like ambient electronic works under the name Blocks. Um, and there's a, a couple of other projects from the guys that were in the band too. But today we're going to talk about As Tall As Lions. And their music is sort of all over the place, especially this record, but it still boils down to being like a good alt-rock band. And... You know, there's a lot of sound in there, but what I, uh, and by that I mean like their songs aren't just two, three track, you know, it's not bass, guitar, drums, vocal, it's, it's layered and it's, it's, it's built up so that the songs sound more sophisticated than I guess your average, I guess, indie rock band. And they're really good at putting words together that make you... Um, I guess sort of fall in love with the songs and uh, there's hooks so there's pop sensibility but they're not like littered with it their music is still very technically and artistically uh, unique and, and, and smart and intelligence driven so um, for that reason I really want to do this record so albeit it came out uh, several years ago and they have been broken up for I think about six years now, um, I saw them just before they broke up, and it was really good. Uh, and prior to that, maybe three years prior, I saw them in a record store, um, of all places, right? That's a good place to see a band. And they killed it. They killed it both places. Uh, and, and when I saw them the last time, it was at uh, Coachella in a festival setting. So to be able to see them in a tiny little uh, record store where they had no room, and then also see them in a very large-scale festival, and then sort of own it both times, in both ways, is just another testament to... Um, them as musicians and and what they did with that band so uh without further ado check out some if not all of you can't take it with you the last effort from uh you know forgotten as tall as lions and see what you think of it and then come back and let's let's talk about the album overall and and give them a little love because even though they're not a band anymore this record deserves some attention and if you're a fan of music I think you'll like it. So check out As Tall As Lions, You Can't Take It With You, links below. All right, so let's briefly talk about what that was. Um, did you like it? It's pretty good, right? Um, if you did sample it or you're familiar with it, I bet you do like it. Um, and I almost feel like it's ahead of its time. Like if that band, this band, As Tall As Lions, was to come out right now um, and put out the same album, they would almost be more appreciated or accepted. Um, they remind me of, and, and maybe if you like these bands you'll agree, um, Local Natives a lot and Foles in a sense. And those two bands, um, a little bit more popular in the last few years, um, and so sort of on the cusp of them exiting as Tall as Lions, these other bands sort of stepped in and filled the space and, and become a little bit more popular. So I wonder if, you know, as Tall as Lions wasn't able to come around and maybe tour on this music right now if it wouldn't, um, I guess, heighten audience awareness and sort of be more embraced. Um, I think that they embraced their audience really well in making music that appealed to a lot of people and being very open-minded, but, um, you know, it, it was sort of forgotten or, or fell on deaf ears, if you will, and, and that's not to say that they didn't have a large fan base. They did, but for as sophisticated and talented as a lot of the workings are on this album, I would expect them to, to have been a lot bigger, especially as we see what bands do catch on, especially with modern music right now. And I don't mean on like Clear Channel Radio, but, uh, you know, Satellite Radio, Sirius XMU, Alt Nation, you know, the festival circuit. Um, 
those bands are becoming more and more prevalent, the, uh, you know, the go-to for selling records. And, and the record industry has sort of realized that. And I think that they were just unfortunately a little ahead of their time. So let's look at the record that came out um, more recently. As part of that, as the vinyl resurgence takes over, you have these labels repressing bands that don't even uh, you know, exist anymore. And, and this is pretty cool, this green... Uh, it's, it's got like a white and blues and yellows, and, and I don't know how much of that's going to read on camera. Let me put it up real close. Sort of check that out, you know. And, and for one, I do like that the, the label put their identifier on here. Um, uh, as you may know, if you've watched any of my other videos, I'm big on labels putting their label on the label. <laughs> you think, right? Uh, but anyhow, um, just really cool. It's a, it's a gatefold. It's a 2LP. It's solid. Um, and, you know, the side D is some bonus tracks that are or are not necessarily part of the album because they don't really fit. They don't really gel in the mold. One is an alt tape. The other two almost sounds like a different band um, or different bands. But, um, you know, they're, uh, they've been available since the record came out, and so one way or the other, they were part of it, they came out with it. And I don't know if that was done because they sort of anticipated the end of the band, and they just were like, you know what, let's put these out too. Or if it was just, you know, uh, a bonus, because that's what it's called, you know. <laughs> Anyhow, um, cool artwork. Uh, let's just look at the open face. It's kind of simple, but you've got the lyrics in here. Um, lyrically, really smart. Just, just very... Um, educated songwriting, which kind of shows how, um, you know, the, the main guy, what's, what's his name? Uh, Fitzgerald, I think? I don't know. Uh, he He's a songwriter now, by trade. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, he, Dan Negro, I guess that's his name. He, he was, uh, you know, He's just sort of putting his heart out on the line here. And what I like is that the lyrical dialogue are sort of these, like, strong sentence statements, if you will. Um, uh, it's better to die on your feet than live down on your knees. Um, God's a comedian playing for a crowd too scared to laugh. Um, what else? Uh, can, you don't have to see something to know it needs a change. Just, just statements, you know, that sort of work that you can hear whether or not you're paying attention to the whole entire song lyrically, those statements uh, sort of, in and of themselves, make make a listener sort of want to participate in actively listening after that. At least for me, that's what it does. And it sort of opens up a, a, a dialogue for the song, you know, as a topic. And I think it's really important to note that if you're going to have a song that has a, a good message, that what you do, or at least what As Tall As Lions has done here, is you put something like that in there that says, here, in a nutshell, here's a statement, a, a sort of bright statement to you as a listener that's sort of giving you a piece of what this is about. And then you sort of hone in on it and look at the bigger picture. You, you, you find the rest of the songs, and rather than just saying, well, I'm just going to confluently sort of take this for what it is and learn it as I go, you sort of dial in, get a little bit more precise on the song, you sort of find yourself doing it. And I think as music appreciation uh, is concerned, uh, the average listener sort of listens to a song uh, nonchalantly until they find that they have footing in it, like they care, like does this sound pleasing enough for me to give a shit, and at which time, then the lyrics start to matter. Um, and yeah, I, I admit I do that too, but I think these kind of uh, sentence statement lyrical things, these little gifts, if you will, that are so, uh, I guess, predominantly handled, really allow you to want to come up to that level and, and dive into the songs a little more different. So, what else do they do? Uh, there's, there's a lot of instrumentation here. There's horn works, there's French horns and trombones, there's piano and organ, and they use uh, different sound effects. It's something like sounds like a plane taking off, there's snapping, um, there's like a sitar at one point, they put filters on the drums, uh, you can see or hear a megaphone on the vocals at times. Just just really intelligent usage of a lot of different things all throughout the album. And, and the bass lines, uh, I think as far as guitar or stringed instruments goes, the bass lines are almost the best uh, for stringed instruments because he's not tagging along with the music. He's really adding uh, additional melody. Just really, really good bass line. And if you pay attention to bass, if you play bass, or you like bass, uh, I hate bass. Yeah, no, no. I started out as a musician playing bass, so it's important to me. And I... 
I note it when there are good bassists in a band, and, and their bassist is, for lack of a other word, incredible. So um, their music is smart in that sometimes they'll borrow a loop and they'll use it as a tool. It's not uh, dependency like some modern bands or some DJs or whatever in the space of music now thrive on loops. They sort of use it at times and it becomes something. It, it's, um, it's just another tool in their wheelhouse and it works really well with the tonality of the music and lends to remixing their music, which they have offered remixes of certain things. There's a really good remix of the opener, Circles, uh, if you go on Spotify, that's a kick-ass track. So, you know, the, the percussion is obviously integral. It's uh, done with deft patience in making the songs work, whether they be really fast-paced songs or very slow uh, crescendos that build to these sort of epic places. Uh, and, and that's done with emphasis. And, and I think emphasis is a good word for this band in general because they like to put emphasis emphasis pardon me, uh, in different places at different times. And they do it strikingly. So they create little pockets of atmosphere that as a listener sort of embodies you and, and sort of like the songs and the words do, uh, they, they sort of take you somewhere else. And maybe it's an ooh and an ah, or maybe it's just the way that the song is slowly building. But all of these different uh, tempo changes are done with a very nice ebb and flow um, on the individual tracks and on the overall record, at least the first uh, tracks up through the bonus. And, and it really lends itself to making me accept this as an album as a whole, you know. And, and to that level, I almost want to throw away those bonus tracks because I feel like it was such a nice packaged record up to those that it doesn't really even need them. But because I'm a fan of the band and it's the last thing they did, I'm not going to uh, complain about some more songs. So, uh, you know, there are those intimate lows in the record. And then there's those sort of fun, uh, up-tempo places. And it's all done in a way that encapsulates at least me uh, as an audience that's participating in it, and it changes my environment. And there's a lot of music that, you know, you put it on and it's just noise in the background. It's filler. Or it, it's, it's overbearing to the point where it's taking over your atmosphere, like uh, metal music, you you have to participate in it and sort of accept it. It doesn't really work otherwise. But like their music sort of transforms the environment. It sets a mood, and and I like that because it still has a statement. It's still uh, technically sound. It's still good uh, for a broad audience, but it also can be transformative. And I think if you listen to it um, on you know those kinds of levels, you become a uh, part of the band. You know they bring you in and and. For that, I think that's the, where the talent lies. And that's where I'm sort of wishing they were still a band because there's not a lot of bands that know how to do that. Uh, and it's a, a talent that goes without notice because it's kind of hard to describe or explain that. But if you know that and you know the bands that do that to you, you're agreeing with me right now. You're probably shaking your head at the screen. And I like that too. And so let's just appreciate their ability to do that because that is... Uh, drama in music, uh, and which is intelligence again, but done uh, with sophistication that only few bands, uh, let alone solo performers, can do. Uh, so when a band is that tight, it, it shows something. So what do they do? What is their sort of, I guess, signature things? Well, definitely the main vocalist voice, uh, it stands out. If you know as Hall as Lions, his voice is very there it is, like you know him. Uh, and then they have these accent notes on the guitar. With a guitar, at least the lead guitar, isn't playing riffs for the sake of a guitar riff, but he's sort of building melody or accent notes at times to kind of carry the music. And he does these high octaves, these stretching, scratching, almost noises, almost regularly in every song, so that becomes sort of their signature. And I like it. It's notable, and it's, it's like one or two pedals he's using together that sort of make a sound and that sort of backbones all these other sounds that they have throughout the album because if you listen to it and you hear all these influences from other places it's almost easy to imagine a diagram of rock and roll music where rock is in the middle and it's a circle and you have like all these touch points of other genres whether it be soul or funk or, or alternative rock now or metal or punk or even just folk music and jazz music and, and all the other worlds of music and just sort of bringing them down into this new package. And I think As Tall as Lions, their uh, members were intelligent in all um, 
facets of music. They, they knew a lot of genres. And so when they're putting this out, they're, they're bringing that to the table. They're not structured within this box. They're structured like this, you know, like a tree. And that's, again, more intelligence level on what it makes good music and just more tip of the hat to them, tip of the hat to their predecessors, and tip of the hat to, I guess, a world of uh, brilliant music that was laid out before them that they sort of learned from. So for what it's worth, I just want to say I miss you guys as tall as lions. Um, I know you're doing other things, but nothing has sort of compared to the body of work you put out as a group when you did. And uh, I, I know that it's hard to be a band. It's hard to be in, uh, I guess, the music industry and, and have original content and not get pressured to do other things. And so for whatever reason you left us behind, at least thank you for the uh, music you gave us while you did. Uh, I enjoy it still, still listen to it regularly, and I'm going to get a tattoo. And when I do, I'll let everyone see it. You guys, the band, you guys, my audience here on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, and uh, just sort of represent that forever, because As Tall As Lions uh, has impacted me uh, in the last, you know, six, seven years, and, and I'm gonna take that with me through the rest of my life. So. Thank you again for listening. Uh, I always appreciate any feedback. If you want to comment below, what do you think of this record? Is there anything on here? Is, uh, you know, does anybody out there know something about the band? Maybe a reunion show or something? I don't know. Leave that kind of information for me because that would make me happy. And uh, as always, try to find me on Instagram. It's easy, daily underscore vinyl. Of course, Facebook at Daily Vinyl Online. And right here, subscribe and like. Do all those things so we can stay connected. And you can get the updates with my next video. Uh, they're almost daily, and when they're not, I do batch in a sort of a mashup video at the end of every month where I sort of run down several albums quickly. So if you're into that thing, I do that too. So uh, thanks again. Much love. Till next time, I'm Joey, Daily Vinyl, 365 album reviews in 2016. This was number 71. Take care.